Today, we continue 1,000 point Necron list building as I build a list from my 2,000 point Hypercrypt Legion list down to 1,000 points. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, continuing our 1K list building videos and today we're list building for the Hypercrypt Legion. Now I'm going to do something slightly different in this video. I'm going to take my 2000 point very successful Hypercrypt Legion list and I'm going to work out how I'm going to cut it down to 1000 points. List building at this points level is really hard. You've got so many things to cover. You've got the primary mission, the secondary missions, you've got the potential of meeting different opponents with totally different lists to maybe what you're used to in 2000 points where basically everyone has all of the toys they want. At 1000 points it's not quite like that and sometimes the games can be one-sided. So we are going to try to list build for a list which is going to have a chance on the table, maybe cover most of the bases that you need. You can't always cover all of the bases and I'm going to do it via my Hypercrypt Legion list which as I said I've done incredibly well with. Now it is really really hot today and sticky so apologies for the sticky noises. Okay so here we go hit the like button and let's get on with it. So here is my 2000 point Hypercrypt Legion list. As I said, I've done incredibly well with this list. We have three Catans, the Void Dragon, Transcendent Catan, and the Nightbringer. We have three units of Locust Heavy Destroyers, two units with the Gauss Destructor, and one unit with the Exterminator Guns. I've got a Locust Lord with the unit with Exterminator Guns. Then we have three units of destroyers. We've got one unit of three, one unit of two, and one unit of one. We've got one small battle line unit, five Necron Immortals with Tester Carbines. And then we have two units of death marks, a unit of five, and a unit of ten. This 2000 point list gives me all of the options. I've got my anti-infantry, I've got my anti-tank, I've got my objective scoring for primary, I've got my secondary objective scoring, I can be anywhere on the table that I need to be and it works really well. However, how are we going to make this list work at 1k? Because that's what we're going to try to do. Now hopefully this series of videos about list building is going to help you. That's what this channel is all about. If you would like to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so first let's talk about the three Catans in the list. The Nightbringer, of course, does a lot of work on the table. It's very nasty. And I've personally found the Void Dragon is also really, really good, especially if my opponent has vehicles on the table. But even without vehicles, it's always performed really well. The Transcendent Catan obviously is quite unique in the fact that you can teleport it as long as you're not in close combat. So they all have their uses. Now I did seriously consider just changing things up and having the deceiver in the list at this point's level. However, I feel that the Transcendent Catan is the best one to go for out of the four Catans, especially at 1000 points, because being able to move around the board without having to hypercrypt is really useful and it lets me teleport onto an objective early in the game, which maybe the rest of the list isn't going to be able to do. So the Void Dragon and the Nightbringer were out of the list. Now, of course, the Catans are quite a lot of points, so dropping two Catans puts me in a strong position for reducing this list down to 1,000 points. I'm already at 1,415 points. Now I knew I wanted both of the Hexmark Destroyers in the list because they are fantastic for secondaries. They only have a small footprint, they're lone operative, and of course they have the deep strike ability. So 
The two Hexmark destroyers were going to be in the list, but I knew I couldn't afford to have the Death Marks in there as well. So next I dropped both units of Death Marks. That brings the list down to 1,235 points. I've still got another 235 points to lose. That's quite a few points. Now I think it's pretty essential that you have at least one battle line unit on the table. So I am going to keep my Immortals. I'm going to stick with Tesla. So yeah, my five Immortals are staying in the list. Now of course in my list I have three units of Locust Heavy Destroyers. Two units with the big gun, that's my anti-tank guns. And then I have one unit with the exterminator gun. That's of course the infantry killing guns. And with that unit, I have the Locust Lord. Now the Locust Lord has the enhancement Arisen Tyrant, which lets me reroll ones to hit. And also on the turn that I'm set up, I get to reroll all hits, which is really nice because of course I get critical hits from him as well and that means any fives and sixes are sustained. Now in rapid fire range, that's 12 shots per model. That is a lot of dice, and that's a good chance of getting those critical hits. This unit can certainly put a lot of work in. Now of course, we always like to have our unit survive for as long as possible, but with this unit, it doesn't tend to survive that long, maybe one or two turns, because I have to play it slightly aggressive because of the nature of how the list works. That unit is another distraction unit along with the Catans. And I think I do need this type of unit in the list, not only a unit that can put out a lot of firepower, but also a unit that can distract and maybe draw quite a bit of enemy firepower. So I'm going to keep this unit in my list and of course that does mean that I'm gonna to have to make some compromises elsewhere. Now if you are enjoying this video or any of my previous videos then did you know that you can become a member for as little as 99p you can support the channel and any support that I get I do really appreciate. Now I do love having Locust Destroyers in my list they're a great unit they can block areas of the board that you don't want your enemy to deep strike into Plus they can do, of course, actions and they can take objectives. They're quite multi-purpose, especially for the points. But in this list building exercise, first I dropped them to see how many of the heavy destroyers I could keep in the list with the big guns. Because there's no doubt you do need some anti-tank guns in a list. Now after dropping all of those locust destroyers, I'm still 55 points over for the list, so I've still got to make some more cuts, which is proving really difficult, because like I said, you do need those big guns in the list. Now, yes, you may face an opponent that doesn't have any tanks or any monsters. I mean, that happens, you know, that's just a bad matchup. But generally, most armies tend to have at least one or two of those particular units, and you're going to need to deal with them. And Locust Heavy Destroyers in my personal experience, are one of the best units to do it for the points. Now I did think about dropping down to one unit of three heavy destroyers with the big gun, because one of the powerful things about Necrons, especially in smaller games, is it can be harder to kill a unit outright and stop RP. So yeah, it would make sense. One bigger unit is harder to kill. However, I think that it's a disadvantage to have that one big unit, especially where you have less units to do actions, because if that one unit gets stuck doing actions, then of course it can't shoot. Plus it's harder to be in two places with one unit. So in the end, what I did is I dropped one heavy destroyer from each of the two units. Now that puts me below 1,000 points, 955. I've got 45 points left over. Now I could have a unit of scarabs and be done with it, 40 points for scarabs. However, I don't think scarabs are the best thing for the points at the moment, especially in this list where you have no uh, cryptics around to help them score secondary objectives by making them OC1. So, 
what I'm going to do is going to take a Locust Destroyer because I think they're much better than Scarabs, especially in Pariah Nexus. So one Locust Destroyer is back and that gives me 15 points left over, which I can take an enhancement on one of the hex marks. So yeah, there's only one for 15 points. It's called, what's it called? It's called the Hyperphase Dis... <laughs> It's called the Hyperspatial Transfer Node, and that allows one of my Hexmark Destroyers, I'll put it on the Warlord, to auto-advance six inches if I need to. Sometimes it can be useful to advance, and yeah, six inch automatic advance is nice. 15 points, it just tidies up the list, makes it exactly 1,000 points. Only 17 miniatures, that's quite a small model count, but almost everything is multi-wounded. And I have most of my bases covered. I've got my anti-infantry, I've got my anti-tank, I've got my battle line home objective scoring unit, I've got my locust destroyer, which I call a throwaway unit. It can be multi-rolled, either at the back of my deployment zone, just blocking a part of the board, we're going out doing actions or just a little support for the immortals. My transcendent katan is going to go out and cause trouble along with my locust lord and his heavy destroyer unit who are going to use the stratagem to deep strike in within three inches if needed. And my two hex mark destroyers will go into reserve and come down and do any actions that are necessary. Now, of course, as always, I'm going to play this list and make a battle report out of the game. I'm going to play Richard from CM War Games, and he's going to play his Dread Mob Orcs. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned for the battle report. Here is a playlist with our other battle reports in, and here's a playlist with my other list building videos in. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.